Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Pitch Perfect 3, starring Anna Kendrick, Ribal Wilson, Brittany Snow, Anna Camp, Haley Steinfeld, and John Lithgow, directed by Trish Sai. Forgive me if I said that wrong. Now, before I get into this, I was really excited about seeing this movie after seeing the first two, and what did I think of it now? Let's talk about it. First, the... The first of the Universal logo I felt was great. The second one, just obnoxious. And this time, it's all the Bellas doing... Felt good, but I'm afraid it's a little pointless. Becca being portrayed for the third time by Anna Kendrick hates her job as a music producer because the musician wanted it his way. I don't know what the hell his name is, which sounds horrible by the way, and Becca sounds so much better than the musicians. It's just, the way it sounds is absolutely, oh my god, it's painful. Fat Amy, portrayed for the third time by Rebel Wilson. Now, I'm not going to say very nice things about her because she's very annoying in this movie. Everything about her is so random in this movie, and she says random things. Like, how stupid Emily is. And I'm like, I don't like you anymore, Fat Amy. I mean, really. And we'll know... About her backstory later in the film, which that doesn't excite me either. What happened to Bumper, a.k.a. Adam Devine, the Jack Black lookalike guy, and Jesse, played by Skylar Astin? Because they could have used the work, and the writers just write them out of the movie like, Goodbye, you're gone. Just bad idea. Chloe, played for the third time by Brittany Snow, is this time having nothing to do except... Loving one military man, and so is Anna Kemp as Aubrey for the third time, except her storyline is missing her father. Haley Steinfeld back for the second time as Emily was just a better presence like Kendrick, like the other girls except for Fat Amy and Stacy, is having a baby this time, and she's out of the movie most except for two or three scenes at most. The Ever Moist, led by Calamity, played by Ruby Rose, is an actress I've seen in John Wick 2 and Resident Evil The Final Chapter th this past year. And I like the actress, but the script isn't doing her any favors whatsoever. I like the songs, but the singing I felt was a little awkward, particularly since they're using instruments while the Bellas are use their mouths. John Lithgow as Fat Amy's father. Now, poor guy like Daddy's Home 2 is... He's comedically wasted by a bad script, Fat Amy's bastard father in a complicated subplot of the movie. Which, I have a question. Is this movie a musical comedy or a musical action comedy? Because the first two movies are musical comedies, but this movie is confused about what it wants to be on the tone of, the, of a musical comedy. And I'm going to put the blame on the director of this movie, Trish Sai. Please forgive me if I said that wrong. Does she know how to be funny? Because this isn't very funny, to be brutally honest. Theo is the agent of DJ Khaled, and they made Becca test her music ta musical talent on the DJ's beats, and Theo sees Becca for her talent and decides to get Becca without the Bellas. And that felt like a weird sequel thing, even for a part three, might I add. A French goon goes up to the Bellas without Fat Amy and Becca, and they go with the Frenchman. Like, why would you go with him in the first place? Like, seriously, are you guys that stupid? Have you ever been to France like this in general? I am going to take that as a no, so I'll let that go. Found Amy is talking to her father like she's Liam Neeson from Taken or in an action star m mode. Because her father takes the Bellas and to a yacht that was owned by him. And this is when the movie begins to lose me and I want it to end. When the Bellas sing one last song while Fat Amy comes to the rescue, was just absolutely stupid, just poorly choreographed. I mean, Jesus, let the movie end after that subplot, but that's not going to happen because after Fat Amy and Becca saved the Bellas, Becca confesses that DJ Khaled wanted Becca, not the Bellas, and Becca sings Freedom, Freedom as the opener of DJ Khaled's car concert, excuse me, and the movie ends with the memories of the first two movies during the credits. And I was just ready to run out of the theater because it was so bad, just in my opinion. Now it's time for the rating. 
I'll give this movie a 3.7 out of 10. This is a typical bad part 3 is like Spider-Man and Terminator. But the difference is the characters except for Becca and Emily were so annoying. Especially Fat Amy. She was just so obnoxious throughout the movie. There's no plot and it's confused on what it, kind of movie it wants to be. Just not worth seeing. Don't watch it. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for the Pitch Perfect Retrospective. And please, before you go, um, be sure, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe, watch some more videos, and leave a comment in the bottom that might be positive, might be negative, who knows. And until next time, let's go, pitches.